So this is a client that sells equipment uh, from Dell Compellent. Uh, this is a blog site set up. It's a WordPress blog and uh, it's a fully functional blog site that they use. And You'll notice that they've replaced the budgetary pricing button with something that says Compellent Pricing. As I mouse over this you can see in the lower left hand corner that this is actually going to open into Echo Quote. Okay, so let's click on this button and see where it takes us. We are now on the Echo Quote portal, the initial screen that uh, you see when someone clicks on the budgetary pricing button. Now they've obviously customized this for their using their own colors. Um, notice that they have the Powered by Echo Quote logo here that actually helps move a customer through the cycle. Everything about this page is designed to move a customer through the process and get them to request a quote. We're just trying to get them to convert at this point. If you read the text, it's very non-committal, not buying or committing to anything. It's always best practices to show a customer the steps that they're going to go through. So they're going to have to enter their email, then they get to select items, then they enter their information. And This order is very important because it gives them confidence that they don't have to enter any information until they've found the items they want. So we get higher conversions because of that. So this is really the first step and once again is a best practice is to ask for an email address first. Now we can actually block certain email addresses. Let's say I want to block a prospect at Hotmail. Let's say they, they put a Hotmail e a email address in. We can block any number of domains. I'm going to go ahead and put my regular address in here. Okay, I'll use my echo quote address. And what we get now is basically a split screen. In the top part is are the items that the customer can actually purchase. Now, we've obviously set this up beforehand. So what we did is we went in and helped the client create four or five packages. They sell very complex equipment. And we didn't want to try to list everything. This is this is not a product configurator where we want every variation. We created some what we call entry level bundles. So basically some basic bundles. There's a standard bundle. And basically you can see that uh, a customer can choose from any of these items, but there's no pricing here. Okay, here's the add to quote button. Let's say they want a standard bundle. Okay, once they start clicking on that, we start building their quote down in this lower window. And I've got the screen shrunk down here a little bit for the video, but normally it would be much, much larger and you can see everything. So the customer can continue to pick what they want. Let's say they want a little extra enclosure there then they basically fill out their information save their quote and notice I want to, I want to point out make sure I, I'm, I'm clear on this there's no pricing published or displayed anywhere until the, the end user gets their quote with your approval so now they click get a quote and it says it will be sent now what's happening behind the scenes is an email is being sent to your sales team to actually look at this request, figure out who I am requesting it, and either approve or deny it. So let's go take a look at that. Look at the quote request. So now I'm actually reviewing the request that was just made by, by Dale Underwood. I'm looking to see what was requested and everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and approve this. I can either approve or deny it. If I deny it, nothing goes back to the end user. But if I approve it, they get their quote quickly and it goes back to them. They get their quote and then I can follow up and start a sales conversation. Let's go see what the statistics are for Compellent. We're actually in the administration panel. This is what we want to see. Monthly averages since February 2012. They've been running this for about a year. So every month they capture about 52 email addresses. They get 26 requests. Uh, that may be the difference there may be because we're blocking a lot of the hotmails and gmails so we're capturing them but they're not proceeding with a, a quote request denying 10 and approving about 16 per month the value per month of what we're approving is 2.5 million dollars 
average deal size that we're approving is 159,000. If I look at the sources, this is very good for marketing because I can see all of the the buttons that were clicked from my blog. This web 4C source means 39 of these requests came from my blog. All these web 4Cs here are the blog. So you can see how a blog is so powerful. Here's a simple pie chart that summarizes that those statistics that we just looked at. Blogs generate a lot of leads. We're getting 60% of the leads from the blog. So it's very important that you add a call to action and take your blog seriously. How about marketing value? Do you think blogs actually have marketing value? Here's the dollar value that this blog is generating. The total marketing value in the past year is about 36 million. 60% of that is around 21 million. So if you ever have trouble justifying your marketing budget, keep in mind that your blog could virtually double marketing's value. Thank you for your time. I hope we get to work together.